Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to York, everybody. Now, if you thought Cotmanthorpe was quite a residential village, well, this is kind of like its twin. This is on the eastern side of York, and it's called Dunnington. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Dunnington in the city of York lies approximately four miles east of the city centre. Like many others on this eastern side of the city, Dunnington used to be part of the East Riding of Yorkshire and then became part of York via the Selby district of North Yorkshire in 1996. The village dates back to Anglo-Saxon times and was listed in the Doomsday Book as Donnington, which translates to mean estate associated with a man called Dunner. The village has an historic centre, most of which is a conservation area. The village cross, which stands right in the centre, is Dunnington's most well-known landmark, but there are plenty of others. There's an 11th century church, several shops and two pubs, as well as an excellent sports area. Amongst the things that Dunnington is famous for would be the fields around the village, which were used to grow chicory in the 19th century. Chicory is a perennial herb, which is used in coffee or as a food additive. It was a major business which employed hundreds of local people. These days, Dunnington is more of a commuter village, and whilst a few farms do still exist, most people who live here work in York. Unless you're an internationally renowned voiceover artist, that is. We'll talk more about him as we make our way around this compact village that boasts a population in excess of 3,000. Oh, and let's not forget the hamlet of Grimston either, which has one of York's park and ride locations. Let's go! We begin in one of Dunnington's many housing estates. The village is overwhelmingly residential and acts mainly as a commuter village for York. The areas of housing are all centred around one main street, York Street, which we're heading towards. Dunnington has remained a compact village despite all the developments. Housing styles here are varied. It's hard to pin down one that makes the village distinctive because it's been added to in stages. The historic village core, though, is a conservation area which covers York Street, Church Street, Common Road and a few other neighbouring environs. Speaking of Common Road, that's where we're going to find our first landmark, the Methodist Church. This was built in 1868 and replaced an older one that was on York Street. There was also a primitive Methodist chapel as well. As we hit the village centre, we find the Cross Keys pub. There used to be two pubs in the village centre, but the Greyhound is now a Day Lewis pharmacy. I'm not going to lie, it is about dinner time right now, and the food at the Cross Keys smells really, really good. Really, really good. I don't know. I suppose it has to be good when there's plenty of people to serve. Okay, now we're going to head down the uh, main street here, and the first thing of note is a cross. Let's talk about that next.
The Village Cross is Dunnington's focal point, standing as it does at the convergence of four roads. The development of the village has taken place around this very landmark. The historic buildings around the cross suggest a village square was once a thing. These days, York Street is Dunnington's central area. This runs from the cross in a westerly direction and has a lot of village amenities, including several shops, a restaurant, a florist and a hairdresser's. It's also where the parish notice board is, and that means you can all tick off Dunnington from the York list. 13 down and 18 to go. We're not far off halfway, are we? If you need a bus, this is where to catch it. The village is served by the number 10, which runs across York and terminates at Nether Poppleton. York Street does have some buildings which have changed their use. This restaurant, for example, 66 Bistro, used to be a butcher's shop not long ago. Okay, let's see what's in the phone box. There's your answer. It's still got its phone. The last part of York Street takes us past a cost cutter. Keep this in mind for later because Dunnington has a link to the company who owned them. Next door is Patter Cakes Bakery, and given the size of the queue here, this seems to be popular. Their menu is linked below, and it looks more than just a little bit tasty. Church Lane now, and we're entering a 20 limit. That's because Dunnington's primary school is close by. In 1743, there were three schools in the village before the church wardens built a church school in Petercroft Lane in 1836. In 1969, this school replaced it. A doctor's surgery now stands on the old school site. After following Church Lane for a way, we come to this attractive sculpture. Couldn't find anything about this, but farming has always been important to Dunnington. It was in the 19th century famous for growing chicory. The village housed 12 processing kilns for it, and the business employed some 400 people. Okay, we've made our way around to the church, so let's go and explore this next, shall we? This is the Grade 2 listed St Nicholas's Church, which dates in part from the late 11th century. It's had a number of additions and alterations since then, mainly in the 19th century, when it was rebuilt by Hodgson Fowler. It's built of a mixture of limestone, sandstone and millstone grit. The church has two entrances. If the main door is locked, you can get in via a new extension, which is what I had to do. It took me forever to work out where the light switch was in this place, so initially I was recording in the dark. All of the stained glass in here is from the 19th century or later. The east window, designed by William Wales, dates from about 1840, but was replaced in 2009 with new glass designed by Helen Whittaker. Outside in the churchyard are the remains of a stone cross, its base and part of its shaft, which may date from the 14th century, as well as a war memorial. There's also a memorial tablet on the inside, and with the lights now on, you can read this clearly. Well, it looks a lot better with the lights on, doesn't it? <laughs> it took me ages to find the switch, but eventually I found it. it. Seems to be a thing in churches with me at the minute, doesn't it? Behind me, we've got the font, and uh, above it is the uh, tower. You see the bell ropes leading up into the ceiling. Around the back of the church, there's an area of purpose-built sheltered housing. This is called the Glebe, and it was opened in 1984. Via a handy footpath through it, we're now on Church Street, and that there is the Village Hall. This was originally built as a temperance hall in 1889, which then became a reading room in 1903. It still gets referred to by the locals as the Reading Room. It includes Dunnington's Village Library as well. On Peter Croft Lane, here's the doctor's surgery that stands on the site of the old school. It was partly built using reclaimed materials from the school it replaced. Yes, then it's a left turn onto Garden Flats Lane, and this is Dunnington's Scout and Guide Building, which just falls outside the boundary of the conservation area. 
after that, I made my way to the very north of the village to another housing estate, centred on the quite lengthy Holly Tree Lane. So about a quarter of the way down Holly Tree Lane, you come to this path that I'm currently standing on. And I had the choice at this point, do I carry on down Holly Tree or do I come down here and take a right turn? I've opted for the latter because down here is the residence of someone very interesting. I can't help but wonder how good a professional voiceover might sound on these videos sometimes. Here in Dunnington, you can find a guy who does that for a living. His name is Guy Slocum and he resides in this part of the village. He's an internationally renowned voiceover artist, actor and presenter. If he sees this, who knows, he may have some tips. At the end of the estate, we find ourselves on Intake Lane at the entrance to the Holly Tree Caravan Site. Near the beginning of Intake Lane is the Dunnington Millennium Garden. This was created in the year 2000 using native trees and shrubs. These help to conserve and improve the local wildlife and the garden is regularly maintained. Here's a Millennium Marker. Directly opposite the garden is Dunnington's main recreational area, the Dunnington and Grimston Sports Complex, which also features this extensive playground. It's got everything, this sports area. There's also a cricket club here to go with the football club. And behind me is the super impressive pavilion. And that balcony you can see there has even got a name. That is the Cliff Johnson balcony. Good for sports, Dunnington. It really is. Dunnington's sports facilities are exceptional. The local football team is Dunnington FC, who are affiliated to the East Yorkshire Football Association. There's a tennis club which features four courts, which are coloured the same as those used at the US Open. Two of them are floodlit. Dunnington's cricket club were founded in 1920 and play in Division 2 of the Yorkshire Premier League. They use the Village Cross as their logo. Next, it's the Bowling Green, which is widely considered to be one of the best in North Yorkshire. It often hosts county and representative matches in the summer season. Even this bike on Common Road is sports related, ish. This is known as the Route 66 bicycle and it's used as a sign marking the way for the Sustrans route of the same number. It stands opposite the Green. Fun fact, in the 1830s, Dunnington House, close to the Green, was a privately owned lunatic asylum. I am the only lunatic around these days. Okay, we're back on green side and I am very close to the car. As you can see, it is behind me. We have finished this route around Dunnington, but we're not quite finished with this episode just yet because to the south of the village, there used to be a railway line. And of course, Dunnington had its very own station. We're going to go and see where that was and also check out the industrial estate that's now grown up around the former station because on there is something that I made a lot of reference to in some early East Riding episodes. The industrial area which grew around the former station site contains the head office of Bestway Retail, who own Bargain Booze, Best One and Cost Cutter. Bestway's flagship Cost Cutter store is the one we saw earlier in the village. In 2022 it was named the Store of the Year at Bestway's annual awards. The station that was once here was called Dunnington for Kexby and it was on the Derwent Valley Line, which we discussed at length of course in the Merton episode. The station was open from 1913 until 1981. Not much remains of the station now and various things have been built on its site. Here for example we have a petrol station and a car and van retailer. Just up from those is Dunnington's other pub, the Twine and Barrel, which is currently closed due to recent changes in the economic climate according to its website. And then a handy footpath makes this a circle as we return to the industrial estate on Chessingham Park. And that, folks, has been four lane ends. For today's special section, we're talking about York Maze, which is just within Dunnington's parish boundaries. It's essentially a maze made of, well, maze. There's more to it than that, though. 
Located off the B1228, the road to Elvington, York Maze is owned by a former cattle farmer who had the idea to construct a maze as a form of diversification. His entire beef herd had to be culled due to an illness. The maze was formerly located in Heslington, but moved to its current site in 2008. Over the years, York Maze has been grown to suit various themes, a lot of them celebrating various anniversaries. The Jurassic Maze, for example, in 2018, celebrated the 25th anniversary of the original Jurassic Park movie. York Maze holds events too. Arguably the most famous is Hallow Scream, which is held on Halloween. There's also Hallow Tween, which is for children aged 10 to 15. In all, it's a fabulous venue for a family day out, or in this case, night. To finish this episode, we're taking a drive towards and then over the A64 York Bypass. This takes us through the hamlet of Grimston. Grimston is quite an interesting place. This is where two Roman roads once met. We know them today as the A166 between York and Brough, and as the A1079, the former turnpike that ran from York to Beverley. What we've come up here to see primarily though is Grimston Bar Park and Ride. Grimston Bar isn't the only park and ride location in York. It forms part of the wider York Park and Ride scheme, which began as far back as 1990. It's the largest park and ride network in the United Kingdom. It can boast some 4,970 car spaces across six sites. Buses on the network operate frequently up to every 10 minutes. And that's been the Parish of Dunnington. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.